Several months ago I did a video about why I chose Ecuador. I think it's probably about a year ago that I did this video. And believe it or not, it's the most popular video in my whole collection that I've done. I've 260 something videos here and it's the only video that got more than two or three thousand views. It actually got four that forty thousand 40, 400 views, if I read it right, 40,400 views. It's about why I chose Ecuador. I thought today I would do a version two of that, I'm pretty much going to answer the same questions, the 10 items that I covered in that video, but a little bit different now, okay? So uh, I'll get started on it right after this. Hey! Oh, rocket cheek, rocket! Hello there. So why did I choose Ecuador? I, you know, it. Our reasons. My reasons are really pretty much the same. Okay, I got cost of living, healthcare, weather, American dollar, interest in CDs, food, things to do, place to go, people to see, real estate prices other expats and friendly locals. So let's go, really the biggest thing probably that's changed, it would be my budget. And that's the first thing I wanna talk about because the cost of living is always the first thing on people's mind when they think about coming to a country like Ecuador for retirement. So I, rec I did a compiled a spreadsheet. This is my March 2023 budget from last month. It's the results of every penny I spent and here's the clip okay so here it is here's the budget here is my budget for March 2023 last month and I just kind of threw this together uh, it's kind of crude but it's pretty accurate okay it's if you look just follow my mouse all right and we'll we'll go through this line item by line item okay my rent of course $700 a month all right my this apartment normally rents for eight hundred dollars but i prepay for six months and the landlord lets me have a hundred dollars off by prepaying and it works out good for both of us i have a nice decent two bedroom two bath apartment on the top floor of the building that i live in and i have a full ocean view and i'm i'm two minute walk from the beach and you know it's it's a great place I'm not saying that it's the best place. I'm, I'm probably going to move from here at some point pretty soon. And, well, i say within the next couple of months. And probably going to have to pay a little bit more. But uh, I'll be in a, I think, in a little bit better place. Uh, my electric bill last month was $85.25, as you can see here. My gas bill, this is my cooking gas, okay, that I use for my, the only thing I have is my stove. $14.20. My internet is $32.58. My private insurance, this is Humana. Insurance is $59 a month. By the way, that that insurance policy gives me $15,000 worth of coverage for the year. My deductible is $150. So far, it's covered everything I've had to do. I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, in a few minutes. My groceries for $247.27. Now, that's food, pretty much only food, okay? Uh, when I go to the grocery store, I, I don't, when I, I don't count beer and wine as groceries. Beer and wine, I cover in what I call my fun category. <laughs> my groceries would be actually, you know, if you take what I spent at the grocery store, I spent two forty seven twenty seven plus one seventy six twenty two. One seventy six twenty two is what I paid for beer and wine. Most of that is wine for Stella. Um, no, I didn't say that. All of that is for beer and wine for me. She doesn't really take that much. <laughs> uh, medical. My medical. I had one doctor visit this month or in March by Dr. Garcia. Charged me $60. That's what he charges for a house call. And then I had $120.49 worth of medications. Uh, that seemed pretty excessive. But as you can see here, both of these were covered by my insurance. My transportation cost for March was $73.81. That is gasoline for my car, and that's it. Before, it was taxis. My taxis in the previous months averaged anywhere from $30 to $90. One of these days, I'll have to go through and just average it out and see what it costs. But 
I still think I'm doing pretty good on transportation costs by having my own car. Giving in tips, $39.55. Dining out, $221.32. Then, of course, here's that beer and wine money. And then subscriptions, that's where I pay for software that I use here. My editing software, well, Photoshop and Lightroom. House cleaning, $75. So she made three trips from the month of March. She comes every other week. And then, of course, I had an entertainment cost of $107.36. Me and Stella and another couple went to dinner, and I paid for it. Then, of course, my cell phone, $23.80. It's the same every month. That's at Claro. It's an unlimited data plan. It's everything I need. Laundry service, $30. Okay, now laundry service runs me anywhere from $7 to $10 a week, you know, and it depends on whether I have it picked up and delivered or if I take it myself. And then I had miscellaneous expenses of three thirty oh six. okay? Miscellaneous is just stuff that I didn't budget for. Sometimes that can be pretty high, but that's just my own personal. I'm not saying that this would be your cost, obviously. So that leaves a total of $2,407.81. Now, let's take away 300 bucks for miscellaneous expenses. Let's say I do my own laundry, okay? And let's say I eliminate beer and wine. And of course, my electric bill is higher this month because of the heat that we've had. But normally, I'd say probably five to six, maybe seven months out of the year, my electric bill is around 25 to $35 and not $85. Let's say take away 50 bucks for that. And let's say I do my own house cleaning. And there's a, that would eliminate... 75 bucks that leaves me a revised total is one thousand seven hundred and seventy six dollars and fifty nine cents then of course take away the reimbursements that i got from insurance company for my doctor business my medicine and my total outlay was fifteen hundred and fifteen hundred ninety six dollars and ten cents for the month i tell people all the time i could easily live here in ecuador on fifteen hundred dollars a month i could have cheaper rent i could have a less electric bill there's a lot of this stuff that I could do without. My grocery bills, I mean, I could probably cut my grocery bill in, in half. I could definitely take away dining. I mean, because I spent $221 on dining out. I mean, so, you know, it's I'm a single person. I make a fairly decent income for uh, considering that I'm here in Ecuador. And I have a little bit more expensive taste probably than most of my friends. But if I really wanted to tighten the belt, I could live here on 1500 bucks a month if I had to. If I moved away from Monta and went somewhere like Cotacachi or Loja or Cuenca, you know, I could cut my rent down to four fifty or five hundred dollars a month and still have a very nice, comfortable place to live. So that's it. That's my budget for March. As you can see, I mean, I still say, if I, if I really, really, really wanted to tighten my belt, stick to a, a budget, which is what I like to do anyway, I, I could live. I could live here in Monta for fifteen hundred dollars a month. And live in a nice place and live in a good, safe neighborhood, close to shopping, close to the beach. For those of you that really like the beach, to me, I don't care about the beach. But, you know, I do like the view. I like the ocean view. I love to watch the boats coming and going at night and, and, and even during the day. So, but, you know, if, if I, I bet you if I move to a small town like Lo. Loha or Cotacachi, if I can stand the, the weather in the mountain, the higher altitude, I could probably live there for $1,200 a month, maybe even less. I'd have to really make some lifestyle changes, but that's for me. So the second thing is health care. Health care, what can I say about health care? Health care just keeps getting better. In the United States, it's called wealth care. Here it's called health care. I can still get a doctor at my apartment for $60. I can still get my medication, my uh, uh, blood pressure medicine. Here's my blood pressure medicine, okay? It's a generic version of Metropolol. And I get, it's 50 milligram. I take one of these a day. It's a 28-day supply. It costs $6.25. There's my medication. That's all I take. Now... There's been some other medicine that I've had to buy that costs a lot more, but if you can remember from my budget uh, clip, I talked about how the insurance company covered my medication for me. 
So healthcare, nothing's changed. Healthcare is still great here, folks. I have a friend that's going to go into the cancer hospital up in Puerto Viejo next month. He's going to actually have a kidney removed. And I'll tell you, I, I took him to that hospital, Soka Hospital, last month for his initial assessment and some tests and consultations with some doctors and so forth. And I, I tell you, I was thoroughly impressed. And also, I was, I wouldn't say I was impressed, but I was kind of overwhelmed by the number of people that were in that hospital. And this is a huge hospital. It's a cancer hospital. He's going to have his kidney removed, and I'm going to provide him with his transportation services since I have a car. Get him there, get him home when he's done. He's going to have to stay there for a week. Take some people up there to stay with him, and it's all that kind of stuff. Anyway, you know, it's... Uh, I, I, I just can't say enough about health care. Number three is the weather. Now, the weather, boy, that's been something to talk about here lately because we're, we're under this big El Nino effect this year. They're blaming it on global warming. There's an article in the Cuenca High Life that just this, this morning that talked about how the, the whole planet is being affected by warmer water temperatures in the ocean. That's what's causing all these extreme weather conditions. We've had so much rain this year, it's unbelievable the, the amount of rain that we've had. Stella told me that, you know, this is the most rain that she's seen in one season in 40 years. The last time it rained like this was when her son was 10 years old that she could remember. And of course you've been hearing my reports about the, uh, the rains that we had. The rainy season should really kind of essentially be over with by now, but it's not, but still, even at that, the, the weather's still pretty decent. We just get through this rain, you know, and of course, I mean, you know, here in Monta, it's been warm. I mean, it's, the, it's that time of the year. It's the, the summer season for us here. Of course, it's still basically wintertime in North America, but here, it's, it's basically our summer season. Then, of course, number four, the American dollar, inflation. Inflation here in Ecuador for the month of March was 2.8%. That was down from February of 2.9%. So inflation is in well under control here. I, I know that there are some prices that are going up, but the, the, the price of things that are going up are like luxury items, luxury, you know, fancy restaurants, high-end restaurants. There are some real estate prices that have been, I've seen to me like it's going up. Uh, Stella's been telling me that landlords are asking for a little bit more. It, things, you know, there's a lot to be seen over the next few months. There's a lot of development going on here, and of course that's going to drive the, the cost of housing here. It's going to drive it up, as we all know. It's all supply and demand economics at work. The way I look at it is, you know, these buildings have got to get built first. And, I mean, there's People are writing to me and saying, well, I bought a unit at such and such place. And, and my question is, well, first, it's congratulations. I'm happy for you. But my question is, why did you buy something that doesn't exist yet? And that's saying a lot here because there are, I can show you two major construction projects here in Monta alone that have been on hold for since I've been here. So take that for what it's worth. Number five, interest on CDs. That's still a good thing here. You can still come here, put some money in some CDs. You can get anywhere from 8 to 10% depending on which cooperative you go to. We're not going to get into a big discussion about that, folks. I've done lots of videos this year about the interest on CDs. I invested in CDs. I earn income off of them. I get a pretty decent little check every single month from JEP Cooperative. It's not failed me. I don't listen to the naysayers. They're all saying all oh, the Ecuadorian banks can't be trusted. Blah, 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 bullshit. Okay? If, if they fail, then they fail. And, you know, it's just money. All right? Don't, don't, don't bring all your, your, your piggy bank. Don't, bring, don't put the whole piggy bank in one bank here. Okay? Number six, food. Food is still great here. Food is awesome here. Food, I, I do have to say, kind of goes against my... Uh, what I really like to talk, I don't really, well, no, I'm going to go ahead and talk about it. You know, 
There's a lot of fat people in the United States. You're not going to find that here in Ecuador. You can get fat here if you want to, but I'm telling you what, I, I can take my camera and go from one end of Monta to the other end and just take and just pan around, and I bet you we might see 100,000 people. Maybe we'll see five fat people. You're just going to come here? Let me tell you something, folks. You fat people, come on down, okay? That'll be the best thing in the world that can happen to you. You'll lose some weight, okay? I know it's getting a little carried away here, but it pisses me off because we have, pit, we have fat people in the United States living on disability that's paid for with our tax dollars because you're fat and lazy and you won't get off your fat ass and get healthy. So don't complain to me, all right? That's enough on that. There's good food to eat here, good natural healthy foods here, organic foods. Comes right out of the ground or out of the ocean. My estimation, if it comes out of the ground, comes out of the ocean, what can be wrong? Things to do, places to go. There's always stuff to do here. Sorry about the rant on the fat people, but you know what, folks? You know what I'm talking about. And I say that with peace and love, okay? I'm saying it with peace and love. I'm disgusted with obesity. It's an epidemic. Places to go, things to do. There's lots to do here, folks. Lots of good, healthy things to do. You walk on the beach. You can go up 15 minutes from here. You can go to the rainforest. Go, there's a six-mile trek through the rainforest. Go try it. You should come here and, and bring some good shoes because it gets slippery there. And, but you can go there and you can have a ball, man. And I'll tell you what, you'll have a workout when you get through. And you'll learn something, too. We have movie theaters. We have outdoor theaters. We have music venues. You can go dancing. You can get drunk. <laughs> There's lots of stuff to do, okay? Real estate prices. I, that was number eight, real estate prices. I have to say, I, I'm pretty sure real estate prices are going up. But it's not like it is in the United States where it's growing exponentially, okay? It's not like that. I'm still, paying the same pr I'm still paying the same price for my rent right now that I paid two years ago. If I went looking for a new place, probably going to have to pay a little bit more. You might notice that I have a different outfit on a different shirt. Don't have my microphone here. I've got my desk mic here. I forgot a step. I forgot to talk about expats. And that's another good thing about living here is there are other expats here. That you can relate with you know you get to know them seek them out that's when i first came here that's the first thing i did when i went to the mega maxi was i saw english speaking people and i walked right up to them and introduced myself and you know became friends with them I mean, we're still friends today so on the same note there are expats that you're going to run into here that you don't want to be friends with and it's unfortunate there are people that come here from the from the U.S. and from other countries, and they bring their problems with them, and that's just nature, human nature, folks. But all in all, there are some good expats here, okay, and you will meet them. Here's one right here. So I'm not shy, and I'm not I'm not um, so special that I won't help you out or spend time with you. And I think a lot of you know that. So there are good expats here. That's another good point about being here. And then number 10, friendly locals. I can't say enough about it. The people here, I, I'm amazed. I was with a friend of mine at a prosecutor's office the other day. I'd go down and take care of some business. And while we sat in the hallway, sitting on a bench, waiting to get into the office, I don't know how many people came up the stairs and walked right by us. Every single person that came by said, Buena. I think that means hello. They said, they all said buenas, buenas dias, buenas, buenas tardes, buenas. I think they say buena as a shortcut. I'm not sure. Some, somebody's going to correct me about that. And, and that's fine. Please do. But everybody, everybody speaks. Everybody's friendly here. The people are friendly. People are not walking around like this, okay? They're not doing that. You don't see, you know what you see, Here, here's what's amazing. People on their cell phones, they're doing this. They're happy and they're taking pictures of themselves. It's amazing. They're not cruising the internet, you know. They're taking pictures of themselves or it's in their pocket. And when you speak to a local on the street down here or in the mall, they speak back. Imagine that, folks. Can you imagine that in the United States? 
You know, they're not pulling a gun out and shooting you. They speak to you. So anyway, that's it. That's, that's my version two of why I chose Ecuador. Ten reasons why. Read the description, if you will. I wrote something in the description about this. I still say Ecuador is a great place to, to come. It may not be for everybody, you know, but for most people it's going to be, it's okay. All right? And folks, this idea of all this crime, just put it out of your head. All right? We haven't had a mass shooting here that I know of. The only mass shooting that's gone on here is in the prison. Knock yourselves out, guys. All right? Shoot, every one of you, shoot each, each, all of you, shoot each other and get it over with. All right? Don't bring it to the streets. So that's it. If you like this video, please smash that thumbs up button. If you didn't like it, bite me, and I say that with peace and love. And if you like this channel, please subscribe. I'll thank you for that, okay? Have a great day, and I'll see you on the next one. Ciao, ciao.